So welcome here at the beach uh, in uh, Tel Aviv, my uh, home for the last 10 days. Uh, the expedition, by the way, just look around. It's a, it's a 360 video, so take your time to uh, check everything what's going on over here. Uh, I will also edit some other uh, footage uh, in this video. Uh, I've been in now for 10 days. I did in total 10 interviews. Uh, I, I, I attended two big WeShare events. Uh, the first WeShare event over here in Israel about trust in peer-to-peer -peer platforms. And uh, I also yeah, met many uh, really amazing people and also, of course, uh, visited also Jerusalem uh, at my last day. So today I'm leaving, so I want to do a quick recap of what I uh, experienced over here. Also a recap of the interviews. All interviews will be online uh, at the end of next week. And I also will uh, write a really long blog about it. So this is just a short uh, goodbye video. So the, way I, uh, the reason why I was here was to uh, search for platform disruptors that are giving the power back in the hands of the crowds using decentralized tools. So what you see in sharing economy, in platform economy, there are many new initiatives who are really giving power back to the people. But uh, when you look at the way they're organized and the way they're financed, it's quite old school. So there are quite some new uh, blockchain decentralized uh, initiatives going on. So uh, that's also the reason why I was over here in Tel Aviv. Uh, I uh, want to talk about three things. Uh, first about the, the, the decentralized, then about the reputation, and then about some normal platform, because of course I also did images with uh, the more traditional platforms. Uh, the, the, uh, it started over here last Friday. I had a, a meeting with Gil and with Tomer and with Dan from WeShare uh, Tel Aviv. They're now really building up the uh, sharing economy uh, industry over here or the scene and also making the connections over here in Tel Aviv. They really gave me good insight in uh, 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 the culture, in uh, the country and also in the entrepreneurial climate and also in okay, what is going on over here in the sharing economy. It was really interesting. They're also on video, it will be published next week. Uh, decentralized, um, so what is the, uh, the added value of a decentralized platform uh, according to a decentralized platform? So five things. Uh, there's no centralized ownership and storage. I think the ownership is really important because central ownership is also really incentive to make really bad short-term decisions, uh, or it could be. So that's also what I like about decentralized. And also the storage, so when a hacker uh, attacks, it's really hard to, uh, to, to, to shut it down. Uh, really important, everybody who puts value in a network is also being rewarded for this. It's what, what, I, what, I, what I really, really like. It's really transparent, so you, can, so you can really see all the transactions if you want. It's low cost, so it's also benefits for everybody who is who's joining. And it really cuts out the middleman. Uh, I think the only challenge, so I, in total I did four interviews around decentralization over here in, in Tel Aviv. Uh, the first one with uh, Lazus. Uh, Lazus is a decentralized ride sharing platform, let's say the decentralized version of uh, Uber. And it was really interesting uh, uh, meeting with, uh, with Tal. Um, last year I also had an interview with Matan, uh, who was then also involved with, uh, with Lazus. And I think their biggest challenge is uh, two things. Uh, let's start with the first is they are now really doing the uh, decentralized part in the ownership of the organization as in the organization itself. And that's really a, so they're really pioneering in two worlds uh, at the same time. So I think that's really, that is really cool, but also a really interesting challenge. Uh, second one was uh, Backfeed um, with Matt and Fields. Uh, uh, Matan, uh, let's say what they're saying on the website. Backfeed is a governance enabling protocol layer on top of the blockchain, enabling spontaneous large-scale collaboration for the emerging DCU community. The third was, was Scenario with Don. It's a distribu distributed and decentralized social network. And the last one with Ahot, uh, Ohad Azur from Tau Chain. That's an intelligent peer-to-peer -peer network, including the Senate supercomputer. And what you see over there is that they're all facilitating others to create new blocks on uh, a, a decentralized system. So they're building a kind of a, a, a basic of the whole decentralized organization platforms and other people they can in most time open source program their own uh, apps like a sharing app and uh, like a whatever they want uh, like a reputation app on the system that's really interesting uh, i think the biggest challenge is because when i'm talking to them they're really technical driven and many people also like the discussion with banks uh, people say okay uh, in the beginning the marketers were thinking about the products and they say to the IT guys, okay, let's build it. Now it's the other way around. I think it's an interesting thing. But the challenge with that is that also 
that most people in the world over here, also around us over here at the beach, they have no idea how technique works and they're also not really interested in it. So they're only interested in solutions. So I think all the technique, technical people, also from the decentralized platforms, they really have to find smart, smart marketers to really think about really good solutions uh, of things they're going to build. Uh, because in the end, uh, when I talk to them, I understand or I try to understand what they're doing right now. I really do understand where it could uh, go to, and that's really real changing. It's really, really impressive. But there's a gray area, and I'm really interested in, okay, how are you going to make the gap, uh, the bridge between now and the full potential? And I think this will be their biggest challenge. And I think the only way to close this gap is to really come with really practical solutions that are better than the existing solutions. Because in the end, the end consumer will only go for the best solution, and they don't really care about uh, things or uh, if it's c uh, central or decentral because yeah they just don't care for that or maybe they say they care but in the end they don't act so that's a really important uh, important thing um, a reputation uh, because everybody say because we're going to work oh. Okay, that was, uh, I have no idea what they were saying. But reputation, because people are go going to work more and more uh, online together, uh, also with complete strangers, and then and the reputation uh, is really important because how do you know that you can trust somebody? So many people just say, okay, uh, reputation is uh, the new currency. Uh, I really believe that, 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 that the reputation is, 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 is the fuel of the new platform economy. Not the, not the currency, but the fuel, because without this fuel, you can't run the reputation or the platform economy. Uh, I interviewed my TQ, uh, Marcus Levis, he's, he's a guy from Greek uh, making a great system. Uh, then from E-Rated, I also interviewed them in Paris and also in London. So they aim now to be the biggest reputation platform uh, uh, in the world. And also at the WeShare Meetup, Meetup last uh, first date, it was two days ago, there was also a, uh, uh, the, 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 um, the subject of the meeting was also uh, about uh, trust on peer-to-peer uh, -peer platforms. Um, I think because we're talking about reputation, everybody's rating each other in five stars, in four stars, we're giving recommendations. But in the end, I think we don't need to forget because people, because all this system, all these techniques, they're really focused on the fact that people are um, um, uh, rational creatures. But we're not. We're far from rational. So also the decisions we make in trust, they're not rational. So I think we don't need to forget that. Uh, same. So talking about trust, <laughs> I trusted the battery of the camera, but it was empty. So now we're here at my garden of my uh, Airbnb. <coughs> so to continue, so what I say about this guy of trust, uh, a guy who was, who was uh, also having a platform, and he said, okay, uh, normally like uh, I have two children, you and Sophie, I miss her really much, so I'm really going to Holland uh, in a couple of hours, and like when I want to have a babysitter. Now we have a babysitter. Uh, we met her or we were introduced by her during a barbecue uh, just around the corner, uh, uh, just around the corner at our house. Um, and that gave us a trust to say, okay, you're welcome, just take care of our kids when we're going to uh, the restaurant. But in the end, that's not a rational decision because we have no idea if she is a good babysitter. Uh, and the person who introduced us to her didn't check her criminal records, didn't check her if she abused children. So in the end, the decision we are making as humans being there, not rational at all. And I think, yeah, one of the challenges in platforms is that we don't have to trust too much on this rational decision, but also start thinking ourselves. Because the problem is when the reputation system are taking over our rational uh, decision on making thoughts, then it will be, uh, be, uh, be a, bad, a bad thing. But it's a really interesting discussion, of course. Um, ah, there goes my airplane, it's almost up. Uh, last one, what I did. Um, oh yeah, and, and, and more about reputation, just uh, checking my notes. Um, so discussions are, okay, central uh, uh, reputation by, uh, uh, by one marketplace, like Airbnb, or are there new solutions where in the end you can combine all your reputations and they make one trust score of it. So in the end you will have uh, take advantage of being active on different marketplaces because we are not only active at one marketplace. So that's a really nice discussion about uh, that, that uh, we had. Um, and also that, that, that they're also uh, uh, dividing all these reputation scores in different segments because the fact that, that I'm a good Airbnb host doesn't mean that I'm also a good driver when renting out a, a car on a car sharing platform. So it's, it's 
yeah, reputation is, is really, really complex thing. It, it's not that it's really, really easy because it also depends on, yeah, just the context of situation. Uh, last one, uh, normal platforms. I had also interviews with some normal platforms uh, like Eat With. It's a platform where you can have dinner uh, uh, with locals. And I think it's really interesting because uh, I couldn't join them uh, f uh, for dinner because it was already full. So, th so next, next time I need, I need some more planning. But uh, what I think is really nice is when you are coming into a new country and at your first evening you have dinner with some locals, you get the best uh, uh, advice of them of okay, where to go to and where not to go to. That will give you, uh, because like with Airbnb, we are now going to more local experience. As you see around here, this is not a traditional hotel uh, garden. But it, I really like it because the guy, uh, Mati, the owner, really showed me around in Tel Aviv and gave me some good tips. I think things like this, uh, platforms like EatWith will also make the experience of yeah, really meeting the locals much better as a, as a tourist. And you see many other different platforms now popping up in this, uh, in this, uh, in this field. Uh, Trench, uh, Adi, it's a, uh, uh, it's a platform where you can uh, share clothes with other, women can share clothes with other, of course, every fashion platform starts with women. And the interesting thing is you're not paying with money, but you're paying with uh, diamonds, and diamonds is their own internal uh, currency. So that, that, that way, uh, every time where you're uh, going to, to, yeah, to swap uh, clothes, uh, you don't think, okay, I have to pay this, many, this amount of, of euros, of dollars, of shekels for it. Uh, but you just pay with the diamonds as a platform. So I'm really interested in, in, in their next, uh, next steps. Um, and last one, of course, uh, Fiverr. Uh, Fiverr is a $5 marketplace uh, where people all, of, all over the world can work for you uh, starting at $5. Uh, they are now active in one of 19 countries, so, and they just raised 60 million uh, to grow. And they're also now letting go the $5 uh, dollar, uh, uh, threshold uh, because in the end, when you look at the freelancer market, only 3% of freelancers' uh, jobs are handled online. Uh, so there's a really big 97% uh, market of the freelance market worldwide uh, that is open for online platforms. So I think many players will uh, try to uh, pick a piece of this, uh, this cake. Uh, let's see, is there more? No, I just also had a great time in uh, Jerusalem. I just walked uh, into the old town. It's a really beautiful city. It was also really easy to get there. And that's also why I really like all these local platforms because they really yeah, connect you to locals and they will help you to get the best way around. So also the way I went to, to, to Jerusalem, I couldn't find on the internet, uh, uh, but the guys, uh, uh, the owner Mati of this apartment, he said, okay, t just take this in this bus and you will be there in an hour. And when I would follow the Google Maps, uh, it, it would take me at least uh, two hours. So that was a really great uh, experience. So overall, it was a really great experience. Everybody's watching who's living in, in Tel Aviv and, and who, I, who I have met. Uh, thanks for your hospitality. I had a great time. And uh, yeah, I'll be back. So now I'm going uh, back home to my ch uh, kids, to my girlfriend Jeanette, and uh, have a nice uh, Christmas time. Thank you.